Welcome back. In this episode, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the scene tab, about hierarchies, like parent-child hierarchies. I wanted to talk about groups, and I wanted to talk to you about something called the null object in DAS Studio. Those are all interesting concepts, and we're going to be coming across those fairly frequently when we're working with characters and parenting clothing to a figure. But we need to understand the basics first, and I thought, you know, I'll, I'll illustrate that with a little example here. I've got three primitives in my scene, a sphere, a cone and a cube, and they're currently all independent from one another. So no matter which one I select, it can just go and move, you know, its separate way, just like, just like it's a separate object. I mean, because they are separate objects. But I can go and build a parent-child hierarchy in the scene tab. So if we say the cone is my master object, I can go and make sure that the cube follows the cone around by simply dragging the cube onto the cone. And that happens in the scene tab. So I just go and left click and drag the cube onto the cone. And that gives me this hierarchy here with a little indicator that now means the cube is underneath the cone. So what this means is that if I select the cube, I can still move the cube just like I always could. But if I now go and select the cone and move it, then the cube will move with it. That's kind of magic. So this is literally the whole magic behind things like being able to move a figure and the clothing moves with it. I mean, there's other trickery involved. And of course, we have skeletons and figures. So that's that's all that there as well. There's also smoothing modifiers that we're going to learn about later. But the parent-child hierarchy is literally happening like this. Often you have a character and then you have clothing underneath it. And the implication is also that if you make something invisible, and I thought I'd, I'd show you that very early on because it's one of the tips that I get a lot of feedback on that, hey, I really didn't know that Das Studio had that. So this little eyeball icon here makes things visible and invisible. So if I click this, then my cube goes away. If I click this, then my cone obviously goes away. But if you have characters and there's clothing parented to the characters and you want to make the whole thing invisible, then you can also control click the parent eyeball here. And when you do that, all subsequent eyeball icons will also be turned off like this. So this is now control clicking the top parent here, the visibility of the top parent. And if you click that again, then both of them come back. That's kind of a very handy tip. So I'll, I'll remind you of that later. I just, you know, I just popped into my head. We can extend our hierarchy by adding the sphere to it. So I can go and drag the sphere not onto the cone. I mean, I could do that. So now the cone has two children, the cube and the sphere. And once again, I drag the cone around and then both these objects move with it. But either of them is still independent. So a cube's independent and then the sphere is also independent. But I can also drag the sphere onto the cube, and then that builds a hierarchy one level further down. So if I now go and move the cube, then also the sphere moves, because it's a child of the cube. And if I go and move the cube, sorry, if I move the cone, then all three move, as I would expect. And visibility, same thing, control, eyeball of the first icon, then everything goes away. But each eyeball individually will also work if you just want to make one of them invisible. That's kind of neat. So this is kind of almost a group that we've created here, but we haven't, we've, it's not quite a group. It's just one object parented to another that creates a parent-child hierarchy. We could do something else if we wanted every object to be independent, but grouped together so that it's collapsible. So like if I had a really large scene, say an interior cafe scene, and I have five tables and 10 cups of coffee and all that, and that's all getting a long list of items here. And I might just want to basically tidy up my scene tab a little bit. I can do that as well. Let me go and drag these guys out of the parent child hierarchy by just left clicking and dragging them out. That's how that works. Each of these is now its independent object again. So that's this concept called groups. Groups are a bit like invisible nodes that can group things together, like my sphere, my cube, and my cone, for example. They could all go in a group, and then that could be closed. And if I move the group, then it'll behave like everything that's parented to the group will move, and everything can still move independently. We can do that by heading over to Create, New Group over here. 
If I do that, a little context menu comes up. In more recent versions of Dash Studio, we can give a name twice, once actually an under the hood name and once the label name. I tend to not use it and just name it once it's in the scene hierarchy. There's an option down here that's pre-selected that's called parent selected items to the new group, which is kind of nice. If we were to use this apply default settings, then we'd have an empty group in the center of the scene and we'd have to drag in our items manually. But with this here, parent selected items to the new group, everything will end up in the group the moment I hit accept, namely like so. So here we have that group icon and underneath it, I can see that all my objects are which is kind of nice. So the group itself has a manipulator gadget. Granted, it's very close to where the cone is, but if I go and switch these over, you can see they're actually different. And that's an important consideration to know about. So if I were to go and move my objects away from one another here, if I just go and move that sphere here and this guy uh, further over here and maybe the cube. Well, I'll just go over here. You can see that each object retains its individual origin point or its original pivot point. It's also a concept we haven't quite talked about, but it's essentially the point at which the manipulator shows up in relation to the object. So I could make it so that the manipulator gadget shows up at the top of the cone or somewhere that's not even on the cone. Ideally, it'll be where the object actually are so that you can adjust it properly. But you can see that if I go and select my group in the scene hierarchy now, you can see that that groups manipulator is independent and it in fact shows up in the center of the scene. But that is only because all our objects were in the center of the scene when we created the group. It's kind of a little mystery there. Let me go and undo these things up until the point before I created the group, like right now. I don't have a group. I just went control Z, for, you know, a lot. If I were to go and move these objects apart deliberately like so, and maybe I go and put the the sphere over here and I now go and select all my objects and then I go and create myself a group like so new group then it's being it's asking me do you want to parent all the objects to the new group I'm just saying yes that's a great idea then watch what happens the groups manipulator is in fact right here no longer in the center of the scene and that's because that studio creates it where the median point of all the objects are that are in the group. So it's kind of, you know, it's calculated that somewhere. I think it took the bounding box. If you look at that, it took the bounding box of all these objects and then put the pivot point right in the center of that bounding box. Quite clever. But also, if you don't know that's how that works, then, you know, that's that's a problem. So we know and we can work with this. Notice that if I hadn't done it this way, if I go and now go and move some of the objects around, the group's pivot point will remain where it is. And it might lead to issues in which you find yourself thinking, hey, I'd like to move all my objects around, but my manipulator is no longer anywhere close to where they all are. That's a problem. So we're going to talk about how to get that fixed on characters later, the pivot point, how to change that. And the same principle applies to groups, but we're not going to talk about that just now. I wanted to introduce you to one other object and I'm going to go and undo everything, bring it all back. There we go. And that object is very related to the group. It's called an empty and an empty is really a node without geometry. And that sounds crazy when I say it like that, but a node is essentially something like this. So where it says cone, that is a node. And that's just an object really that encapsulates, that references geometry somewhere in memory. And that then becomes the cone object. But right now, it's the same thing. When we get into characters, we can see that they are actually very different, that we have nodes that don't describe geometry. A node just describes a group of something and it usually is associated with geometry, but it can also not be associated with geometry. Like the filament draw options node is a node, but it doesn't have geometry in it. It's just an object placeholder that under the hood kind of, you know, DAS Studio references and does things with and lets us adjust parameters. That's essentially what a node is. So an empty then 
or a null, I'm sorry, empty Blender calls it an empty, Death Studio calls it a null. That's under here, under create null. If I go and do that, it'll go and create my null in the center of the scene. It's kind of what I want. I can also create it somewhere else. I can say, apply the active viewport transforms from the perspective view, for example, then it will be created exactly where my viewport camera is right now. I'm gonna go and hit apply defaults and I can see that there's an object here in my scene hierarchy, but I can't really see a change in my scene. I can use Control F to go there and it is literally right at the center here and I can go and move it as well. Here it is. <laughs> That's my null. And there's nothing in it here. And so you can also use that instead of a group. So it doesn't have the convenience function that we can't drop items in directly when we create a group, but there's nothing stopping you from dragging the sphere into the null and then creating a parent-child hierarchy. So that is also possible. The null retains its own origin point like groups do and it works it behaves exactly like a group but it has other functions it being a proper node it can be used in conjunction with lighting for example it can be used as a helper target for pointing eyes at for example since it behaves like an actual object but it's invisible we could say point the eyes at that target, then move the target and the eyes of the figure will follow it around. Or we can say, point a light at this point or point a camera at this point and then move it and then use it as a framing or as a lighting aid. So just so that you know it's there, I'll probably be using it later when I set some lights. I'll show you some nice tricks that we can use with an empty. Other than that, you can use it just like a group. It's an empty object that has slightly different properties than a group. They, they both exist and I wanted you to know that they do and how you can use them so that you know what they are really. And that is it for this video. Have we got everything? We know how to group things. We know how to parent things. We know how to make things visible and invisible with that control holding click. That also works with nulls, by the way. And we're going to talk about how to adjust the pivot point of a figure later. Yes, I think that's it. In the next video, let's talk about content and what content means, how we can bring it in to Dash Studio, how we can use it, much like primitives, but, you know, have something that looks a little bit better than cubes and spheres. Join me for that.